Hello everyone, welcome back to this game. Okay, so at this point I have gotten enough money to buy that thing and an interesting thing was acquired while I was doing the boss rush. Apparently after beating the boss rush something like four or five times, you acquire the stone mask. I have not looked at it yet. I don't know what it does. What does it do? An ancient stone mask. Grants you the invincible state. Oh boy. Yeah, um, remember how, uh, before I was saying how much I wish I would be taking damage? This kind of, um, ensures that I'm not taking any whatsoever. Oh boy, I want to try this out. Okay, I'm gonna equip this and get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. I'm not gonna do the whole boss rush, I just wanna try it out real quick in one of these matches. Let's do Chupacabra, that would be a good test. Because Chupacabra has that counter attack that kinda hurts. In fact, I figured out that one of those counter attacks is Fire 3, so no wonder that hurts. Oh wow! You can tell that I'm a lot stronger being at a higher level. Ah, there we go. Invisibility. And that's Ice 3. Not hurting me, though. You're not hurting me. Oh, I'm loving this. <laughs> it's like, counter, 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 dang it! <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I know I said before that I was a little bummed that I was not taking any damage while having this Celestial Gear equipped, but, um, when it comes to having an item that fully intends to make me not take damage, that's when it becomes fun. That is fun. I might use that a little bit more in the future. Uh... Not right this moment, though. I actually want to try something else. Uh, by the way, in regards to the Artemis bow, I definitely like how overpowered that is. That's definitely fun. But, admittedly, yeah, maybe it could use some nerfing in the boss rush. I mean, you're not supposed to just wreck everything. You're supposed to have a challenge in the boss rush. And the game creator has agreed, so... You know how the Guardian boss only takes one hit from the multiple arrows? They're going to make it so that the other bosses are like that as well. So that you can't just easily get through it, such as I was able to do before. That said, there is the matter of the Ocular boss. I had a little trouble before because it has that attack that drops you to 1 HP. And in Boss Rush, you do not have the ability to heal. You must have a weapon equipped before entering Boss Rush. Well, that's a weird glitch. Fine, let me quickly get to the Celestial Boss. I want to see if I am able to beat it without the Artemis Bow. Okay, back to you. By the way, as it turns out... Oh gosh. That is going to imply some sort of self-reflection. And that thing can cause confusion. In regards to the first two bosses, even with the Celestial Gear, they actually can cause damage. It's the Guardian boss specifically that can't really harm me much. I'm kind of wondering if there's some way to make it, at the very least, that the Guardian boss is able to take damage. Anyway, I've just been applied with the weak state. I can't heal in the boss rush, so I need to go on the defensive. The weak state not only lowers all my stats, but it also includes accuracy, which is why I'm unable to hit it for a brief time. So, get defensive until my weakness wears off and I can block that one thing, and then I can get on the offensive again. That is the strategy for surviving the rest of this fight with 1 HP. cannot do anything whatsoever during this attack. 
Thankfully, once you're down to 1 HP, that attack can't get you below 1 HP. So, weakened again. Get on the defensive. Actually, you can still hit this thing. Ooh. Oh boy, be wary of those bats. Thankfully, this is still a safe spot. Anyway, Aguilar has a pretty big hitbox. I think I pretty much got this. Also, I'm actually not sure whether that explosion thing can inflict a status effect. I think it can, though. I think it inflicts the status effect that makes it so that you cannot um, use items. Which actually isn't really an issue in this fight, since um, I can't use items anyway. That th attack might still cause damage, though. Come to think of it, yeah, this boss can also cause damage with its other attacks. It really is the Guardian who seems to be the one that can't hurt me. Oh, there's another attack. Okay, I had my shield out, but I was facing to the left and it was coming from above me. That probably means I should have been facing up to block it. Let me try that again. Okay, you're coming from up. Yep, that is indeed the secret to that. You gotta be shielding in the direction it's coming from, because it has a big hitbox. So, now I should actually have this. As long as I'm not stupid. Oh boy, I was kind of uh, fooled into figuring out which direction that was going to hit me from. Thankfully, that attack is actually not causing any damage. Although I think my weakness status affliction wore out. If my weakness was still on, maybe that would have caused some damage from that confusion attack. Anyway, huzzah! I managed to figure out how to beat that boss even with 1 HP. So that actually is doable, which is good, because as soon as the Arminus Bow becomes less effective during the boss rush, you are going to have to deal with finishing it off with 1 HP. That is a fun challenge. Also, I just thought of something. It's those four bosses and the boss rush. At no point do you fight any of the other bosses in the game. You don't have to fight the Ghost Wall. You don't have to fight the... um any instance of the Dark Hero. It's just as well for the Ghost Wall. That thing has a really high defense and you can't use magic during the fight, so that would be a little bit too difficult. Okay. Freedom Cube. After talking with the game creator, I have a pretty good idea what this does. And if it's doing what I think it does, that's going to be amazing. Wait, where is it? Is it not equipable? It might not be equipable. I can use it. That's a new spell. Okay, so when I was playing this game the first time for my first playthrough, <gasps> transforming you into a bird. Ooh, ooh. So, the game creator mentioned that there was a spell that they removed because it was kind of buggy. And judging from recent conversations I've had with the game creator, I'm betting this is that spell. 
It's been added back. I've also been told that it's still buggy. So it's actually something that will be... Not as easy to unlock as I just made it. Spell, right. I can turn into a bird, that is awesome. That is not a building I can go into. Oh, you can still run. Or fly faster, I guess. Oh, I love this. I could definitely see this breaking the game, though. Because... Well, let's see here. Would let you, like, bypass puzzles, for one thing. Also, I'm betting in, like, the Guardian boss fight, I'd be able to... What's this? I'd be able to fly out of the arena and go through the exit to leave the boss fight. Well, that was a thing. Huh. But yeah, the game creator has mentioned to me that they're going to make it so that you cannot acquire it before the final dungeon. Because they don't want you using this to bypass everything in the final dungeon. Can I talk to you? No, anytime you hit the action button, that takes you out of it. Every once in a while, you can hear strange messages coming from somewhere close. I tried to look at the source of the messages, but can never find it. I bet that's what that was. We're talking about aliens. Okay, action button on unwalkable surfaces you do not change back until you're back on a walkable surface. Oh, this is awesome. Already, this is my favorite spell in the game. I'm a big fan of transformation. Must be fun turning into a bird and flying around. Not to mention being covered in feathers, having a beak would probably be interesting, and especially those grabby bird feet. You know what? If we're able to fly up to these buildings, it would have been kind of nice if there was something hidden in them as well. Otherwise, having them closed off to not give the impression that you can go into them. Oh hey, there's a camel down here. If I talk to you a bunch, will that result in something like, Hey, stop talking to me? Didn't even know there was a camel here. Can you even see it from up here? Just barely. Oh, you can walk. Huh. Oh wow, there's apparently a lot more of this map than, um... You're allowed to see. Not really fully developed, though. It's just kind of there. In case you're wondering, you cannot be attacked while you're a bird. Enemies just can't reach you. Okay, I'm kind of tempted to do a boundary break sort of thing now that I have this. Should I do that? I'm going to do that. I'm going to start looking around at different places and see if I can spot anything of interest. I don't know how long this episode will be as a result, but um... I want to do it. Okay, I found something of interest. So here's a scorpion, and down to the down is somewhere. There's that archer up there. I'm betting the archer can't snipe me. Oh, the archer can snipe me. Well, that's actually kind of fitting. That is a weapon that you would possibly use to shoot down birds. Thankfully, I'm wearing armor. But something that you can do as a bird is come out here where there's an oasis. You can't normally see very far, but there's apparently a spot for a campfire over here. Interestingly enough, you are still affected by slopes whenever you're a bird. Anyway, before I continue boundary breaking, I'm told there's something that I missed around here somewhere. Let's fly around and see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. That's hitting good. There's a cave right here. I could totally just fly over this puzzle right now, but... 
I like ice puzzles. I'm gonna try it out. Where am I going? Right over there, it looks like. To the right. Would this be key to get in there? Yes. And what's my prize? Probably nothing that great at this point. Favorite of gold. I'll take it. Anything else of interest in here? Probably not. So I'm sure some of you are wondering about this house here with an open back. Unsurprisingly, you can't actually enter it either. So it looks like magic spells can also hit you. Including status afflictions. I am now a poisoned bird. That is a very interesting way to be a bird, but not an ideal way. Oh, I hope I don't die. Okay, this is another nice touch. Not only does saving make your icon different like that, but it's, you're a bird on the saving screen. Also, one has to wonder, if you die while transformed into a bird, do you wind up going to bird heaven? Well, you guys have all sorts of status effects. Oh, and you've been, you're out of SP. I didn't know that you could actually run out of SP. Um... I feel like, uh... That UFO scene has kind of also somehow messed up this scene. That, uh, that, um, no, that is probably not meant to happen. Kind of think of it, no. Why was the background moving in the UFO scene? Oh, you know what? It's probably a glitch caused by the, um, ocular boss. Well, game creator, that is something for you to fix. A rock that fell from outer space. Oh, does this appear after finding the UFO? Huh. Okay, so good news. There is a way to manually fix this glitch. All you have to do is rematch the first boss of the game. At this point, the game creator is now aware that this glitch is a thing, and it'll be patched in the next patch, along with other updates. To my understanding, it'll be the final patch, and then the game creator will move on to the next game. Do I press a button in order to make it go away? Let me... Oh wait, nope. I didn't press anything yet. Neat! I wonder if that can be triggered again. You know, it's definitely a good thing that I am able to... talk to the game creator. That is how I knew to keep checking this rock. Which is no longer smoking, I notice. Maybe that means this cannot be re-triggered. Probably not. Boy, the game creator sure likes their Easter eggs. So right now I'm in the cave east of Rishiri, and there isn't much of interest in here, but I was kind of curious if there was anything at the other side of this crevasse. There isn't, aside from a hole. Naturally, you cannot fall inside the hole while you're a bird, but despite the fact that you can't normally get over here, you can fall down the hole. By the way, as it turns out, flying enemies are able to attack you, as I will quickly demonstrate. Such as bats. They can attack you because they can fly too. 
You know, it's kind of a shame that I've already defeated all the ghost walls. It would have been kind of funny if I could just noop right around them. By the way, in case anybody is curious, these beacons no longer transport you to the ocular fight. They just let you know that they've activated them all. Okay, I found another thing. So this guy right here, you can set sail for Tatori Port if you wanted to from here. And it's like, okay, but um, where is your ship? Surely that little boat is not implied to be your ship. No, in actuality, you can actually see this even without turning into a bird. His ship is right here the whole time. This is a minor thing right here, but apparently this elevator shaft goes up a bit before the map ends. And then in here was the bridge where I pushed the minecart across. Gotta ask, can I go through here? Nope, that is not necessarily a door. And this is another minor thing, but I thought it was worth showing off. So normally you come across this bridge to this cave, and you can't see very far up, but as you might have already spotted, there is a boat hidden way up here. So this is just kind of a random thing. I'm out here where the bandits are trying to shoot me down, where I was trying to steal back that one key. And here and there, you can't actually go anywhere you want, but there are random tiles that you actually can land on. And there's not really any rhyme or reason to where you're able to walk and where you're not. Like, I can land right here and, in fact, walk on the log. That's kind of weird. And speaking of openings you can't go into... Yeah. At this point, probably safe to assume that if there were any openings that we were not able to reach throughout this playthrough, that they don't actually lead anywhere. So here we are at Kofun Path, and there's a couple of buildings that we didn't really get a good look at before. We can see all the way up to the top of this building here, and then there's the Kofun Dungeon, which is actually kind of interesting, or at least I think it is, but with this pattern on top of the roof. When you're flying over these birds, they don't really care about you, they don't shoo away. After all, we're birds of a feather. Kind of a nice thought. What if I land here, by the way? Is there any point where they'll trigger if I just land on top of them, or do you have to actually walk through them? I'd say you actually have to walk through them. And I'm sure you all are wondering, can you go into the stairs on the stadium? Nope. In fact, you can't even bump into them. They are just visual only. Incidentally, there's also some stairs up at the upper corners as well. And can we interact with this guy? I'm kind of curious about that. Nope. Cannot interact with him. And there's nothing on the rooftop. Okay, I'm back at Noshiro Port because I was informed by the game creator that I should be listening in to some sort of noise at that scene where we first saw the UFO. So I'm going to max out the audio of the game and mute my microphone and let's listen carefully. Okay, wow, that really is really quiet. I had to really check up the volume. Hopefully I was able to raise it enough to be audible. Also, apparently it is in Russian. So, um... Hey, Wario Land. 
Don't suppose you would be willing to translate that for us down in the comments? I'm curious what that sound is. Also, I can't help but notice those are radio towers in the background. It was kind of hard to pay attention to them when the screen was scrolling like it was before. Why there are radio towers in a medieval setting? I don't know. Why are there UFOs in a me medieval setting? Why does sitting on a stool in the beach bring us to a city skyline? North Battle Arena, East Cliff Beach, South Numata Town. I don't know how I avoided reading this sign before. So I believe then that that's going to be pretty much it. I don't know that there's anything of interest out here, though it is pretty wide open. But otherwise, no. You know, we could almost just ignore the balloon and fly up to the Sky Garden as a bird. But who knows, maybe it'd be easier to reach the Sky Garden with the balloon. Anyway, I'm going to once again unlock the final dungeon here. And... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's everything we can do up to this point in the game. We really are ready to go to the Sky Garden. Except not right now, because right now, I'm ending the episode. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.